Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have the awesome UB and this is like a $120 micro quadcopter. It doesn't have the top specs, it doesn't have, it's just pretty mid-level kind of a micro. But the reason why I got this is for uh, a reason which is waterproofing. I really wanted a waterproof micro and that's the reason why I got this. Now what attracted me to this instead of anything else is the canopy here. The canopy will help us waterproof a bit better and it will allow the water to dissipate somewhere else. We will also be conformal coating the insides and right now we're going to take a look at the insides to see how easy it is to waterproof. But before that, let's just begin by some of the specs and some of the down, the cons basically of this guy and then we can go into detail and see the internals here. So it is rocking a 10 amp ESC, the RB Holly S ESC is a 4.1 ESC, rated up to 2S I believe but I've just been flying 3S on it totally fine never even flew 2s once on it so it could handle 3s just fine uh the motors are 1103 7500 kv not the most powerful not the biggest but you don't have to fight this quad when it's flying so that's a big plus it's very good it's a very good flyer by the way uh, it's not it's not the fastest not the strongest but it's pretty efficient and you could totally enjoy it and i totally enjoyed it so that's a big plus the camera is rocking some kind of generic CMOS camera. Um, it's good on light. You will see that in FPV footage. It's not bad at all. Um, I, I didn't have any issues with it, so that's also a big plus. VTX is a 25 milliwatt 48 channel, and it's um, built in with the flight controller and the beta flight OSD in one board. So that's also something to take note of. And the ESC, like I mentioned, it's a 4 in 1 ESC, and it has JST connector here. And the bottom plate is a two millimeter bottom plate. And let's just take a look at the things that it comes with real quick. They give you this spare rubber band thingy to hold your battery. However, I would highly recommend you ditch this and I'll show you right now in a bit. They do also provide you with another canopy and prop guards with landing skids built in, which I won't be using. <clears throat> and they give you two sets of props. Now this thing here, ignore it because I added this for my receiver um, and you'll see that in a bit. So let's take, just, just talk about the cons now. Now, one of the cons is the battery mounting or holding way they executed it. Uh, they do they, they give you a spare rubber band because they know it's going to rip absolutely easy here. Mine ripped on the first two flights. And what I did is I actually replaced it with one of these. And I do highly recommend you pick some of these up. Or else, I mean, if these two rip, um, you, I don't think you're going to be flying it. So I do recommend you get some kind of strap. I'll leave a link to these down below. I just get a bunch of these always. Uh, these are very good for micros. Now, what I've done is, is they do have two cutouts here, so when you insert the rubber bands, but what I did is I actually just like fought this strap through, and I just kept, you know, just until it went through. It was a hell of a lot of work, but I, I got it done, so uh, anyone could do it also. You just need some patience and just a bit of brute force. Not too much because this possibly can break, but it's pretty good. It held up just fine. I didn't see it flex, but also just be careful. You don't want to break that right before as soon as you get it. So that's something that I did not like, but it was an easy fix, so... Yeah, that's not a problem now. Now, another thing some might say is a downside is the camera angle. It's not adjustable, and it's held together with some kind of white silicone glue or something. But it's dampened. It's pretty cool. So there's no jello effect, so you don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. So that's very good from that perspective. But you can't change the camera angle. But I found it just perfect. I really didn't mind it at all. So I could totally enjoy it, do what I wanted to do, and just have fun with it. And we'll get to the FPV footage towards the end of the video here. So right now, back to my main topic, waterproofing this guy. So the whole reason why I got this is to see how we could waterproof it. Plus it's cheap, it's 120 bucks, which was a big plus. And the thing that attracted me to this was the canopy here. Now let's crack open the canopy real quick. All right, so it just comes off with two screws here and it just lifts it up nice and easy. And if we just pop it open like this, we can see here that the camera is held with, it, with just a JST connector right there. So we could even pop this off and then just completely remove it. But I have my receiver stuck in here, there we go. All right, so let's just take a look here. Now there's something before we begin that you have to take a note of, which is very important because this could ruin the whole quadcopter or your receiver. The color coding on the JST they provide you with to connect your receiver is absolutely wrong. As you can see here, yellow was positive for me. And um, yeah, so it was supposed to be, I think yellow was the signal. I don't remember, but check the documentation. Make sure you get the orientation correct. As you can see, there's an S right there, which means this is S bus signal. So just work on that from that position to figure out your wires order. So you don't risk burning anything, shorting anything out. So this was very important. Take note of this. 
and um, yeah, I could save you a headache. So let's just unplug these then. All right, so here we have the flight controller. It's an F3 flight controller with a beta flight OSD, and it also has the uh, 48 channel, 25 milliwatt VTX built in. Now, this is pretty good, it's pretty nice. However, there's something you also need to take note of is that make sure you're able to find parts for this guy because the mounting holes for these this two stack here with the ESC is non-generic. It's not 20 by 20, it's a custom setup. So just take note of that and be careful. So you can't burn this and then expect to go buy 20 by 20 and put it in here. You're not gonna be able to do that with some kind, without some kind of modifications. All right, so looking at this part when I first got it, now we're gonna talk about the waterproofing. I really did enjoy it, however, I hated one thing, which is the antenna here on the VTX because it is a IPEX port and I would really loved it if it was soldered on, but that's totally fine. You know, some people might cut them, rip them, and you could easily replace them. Now, I wish they didn't put that white silicone glue because it's basically useless, as you can see here. From the first time I ever opened this guy, it basically ripped. Uh, just just got destroyed the, the the glue here so we're gonna have to remove this when we waterproof it put some epoxy but after we do the conformal coating on the flight controller and for the connectors i'm going to be using um hot glue and uh, I, th I find it to work best really now let's take a look at the escs because this is this is a good thing and it's a bad thing now if you are a if you're not very good at soldering and you really want to get going this is very good for you but for us it's kind of annoying for people who solder and like to build their own things because the 4-in-1 ESC look at this the motors come on a JST and they connect via JST this is good for most people but some people might hate this but you know it's kind of you know you decide for yourself here now this is going to be a bit annoying for us when we waterproof it because we're going to hit it with a formal coating and then I'm going to have to go in with a hot glue gun and make sure they're sealed because yeah we don't want to burn anything out here so overall it seems like a good candidate uh, the now another thing that's going to be difficult for us to waterproof is going to be the camera of course but I'm sh pretty sure if we just put a shitload of hot glue all over this we're going to be totally fine like we did with our with our waterproof quad build so this should be pretty cool pretty interesting I will add some conf a little bit of conformal coating here and just hot glue everything else around it so it should be pretty good we can probably come in from here and do it we'll, we'll figure it out once we start that process and the canopy itself is pretty good too it's, there isn't many holes so we just put just, just basically hot glue everywhere and uh, I think we should be good to go and now let's just talk a little bit about its flight characteristics so the flight characteristics is um good it wasn't bad at all and when i say by good what do i mean by good now good as in it's not the fastest it's not the slowest but it's not it's not the most powerful either but it's efficient you don't have to fight it it flies good um it doesn't do anything retarded where you have to just basically fight it to bring it back so that was a big plus because if this was a crap flyer i would not go ahead and bother with waterproofing it I would have just came back to these piece crap but for 120 bucks um i find it to be a good deal for me however you might be different but overall the flight was beautiful i did enjoy it and um it's going to be a very fun winter micro for me uh, i'm trying to build a little mini micro waterproof quadcopter uh, set up because i usually break micros like crazy um so this is going to be pretty all, all around pretty good quadcopter it does have two millimeter bottom plate so it's going to be pretty thick it's going to hold a crash plus the canopy here will protect it quite a bit so it's also a big plus for me and well that's it guys that's all i really get to say right now i will be keeping you updated on this of course and uh we'll be waterproofing this guy very soon on the channel and if you're new here Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and I have good news guys, the Crossfire, the TBS Crossfire just arrived, and we're going to do latency testing on it very soon. And I also got the M7 gimbals, so we're going to be doing the FlySky gimbal mod, and Eternity Evolution gimbal mod, so that'll be pretty cool as well, and those will be upcoming very soon. And, well, that's it guys, so I'm going to leave you guys with the FPV footage, I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. See you guys.